There's no greater pleasure in this world than eating food. It's a more pleasure button for me than sex. My weight is ruining my life. When I'm going to get it, how I'm going to get it, how much I'm going to get, it never stops. I know I'm killing myself. And I'm helping kill the woman I love. Mom, I think I should everything up at the doctor's office. Lee's episode is a tale of struggle, support, and some seriously crazy moments. Lee faced more than his fair share of challenges from a young age. After his parents split and he got a new stepmom and step-siblings at just two years old, Lee's life took a dark turn. But life had more for him. Because my boyfriend can't do anything for himself anymore. You ready to help me pee, sweetheart? Yeah. All right. So I have to help him before I can take care of myself. Just living life is a struggle daily. So there's many days that I don't get out of bed because of the pain. And I hate what I'm doing to Renee. Ugh. Something even more terrible happened to him when he was just nine years old. One of his step-siblings molested him and it continued for three years. It was a secret he kept locked away, too ashamed and embarrassed to share. This pain led him to seek solace in food, and by 10, he weighed around 230 pounds. Let's see how he ended up with his unhealthy eating habits. And when I was 9 or 10 years old, one of my siblings sexually abused me. That went on for three years. I didn't tell anybody over shame and embarrassment. I started stealing food out of the refrigerator, going to my room in the closet, and I'd eat it. It didn't matter what it was, as long as it tasted good. That was my comfort. It's what made me happy. So by the time I was 10, I was around 230 pounds. And when I was about 17 years old, I weighed over 500 pounds. I knew I was overweight, but I just kept eating. Emerging from a childhood filled with turmoil, Lee's weight spiraled out of control as he hit a staggering 714 pounds. That was his wake-up call, leading him straight to Deeker Now's door. The moment Lee and his girlfriend Rena sat down with Dr. Now, the air was thick, but not with excitement, with disappointment. But why the disappointment? You'll soon realize. Lee, you are 714 pounds, and Renee, you are 549 pounds. And you both have significant health issues as a result of your weight. Renee, you're diabetic, and you're taking an enormous amount of insulin. Yes. The same seems to be the case for Lee, too. And I see you're on oxygen. So you're no longer able to breathe on your own because of your weight. At their second appointment, Doctor, now, who never minced words, was clearly not impressed. Despite undergoing bypass surgery, Lee had only managed to lose nine pounds over two months, while Rena was smashing goals, having lost 50 pounds. Seems like Lee wasn't following the rules, but he wasn't taking it all seriously. Two months ago, and when you left the hospital, you were down to 546. So you lost only nine pounds since then. But Renee has lost almost 50 pounds at the same time. And she hasn't even had her bypass yet. What in the world is going on with you? Facing the harsh realities of his journey, Lee's attempt to bring lightness to the situation backfired. But Lauder was the last thing on DR, now's mind. He laid down the hard truth. Surgery isn't a magic fix. In fact, without the surgery, Lee might have found himself 100 pounds heavier. Lee's response to these harsh truths will shock you. <laughs> you think it's funny? You have a gastric bypass. I had a gastric bypass, To yes. lose weight. To lose weight. And you're not losing weight. I don't eat a third what I oh, ate just before I had the that question. surgery. Okay. Then You're we're not asking talking me about questions that. that I don't understand no more than you understand. What are you talking about? You're choosing to overeat and you think it's okay? No, I don't think it's okay at all. That blunt reality hit Lee hard. Feeling attacked, he made a dramatic choice to storm out, leaving Dr. Now's advice and attempts to ground him in the dust. Despite Dr. Now's best efforts to pull him back to reality, Lee was determined to leave. 
definitely one for the books in terms of the craziest moments. We're not finishing with me. You're making me mad. Sit down right there. Sit down right over there. No, I'm. Um, Please sit down. Okay. Let go of me, Renee. All right, this is completely unacceptable. His behavior right now is very alarming. But he's starting to realize some of the issues. Lee's story wasn't just a clash of wills. It was a vivid illustration of the importance of accountability and facing up to the tough truths about personal responsibility in the weight loss journey. And if Lee chooses to avoid those issues and run right now, then he's going to continue on the same path that he was where he's not going to survive another year. Renee, you stayed on track despite how Lee's behaving, and I'm proud of you for that. Kenny Dolphus was that unforgettable contestant who expressed her craziness telling Dr. Now, you're not a god. At 41, Kanai stepped into the limelight, ready to tackle her lifelong battle with obesity, where even standing up on her own was a major challenge. Can you believe it? Just a 45 second stand up and she was done. How will her journey unfold as she takes on this monumental challenge? Or another. These days, even standing is a painful thing for me now. I can't stand up on my own for more than about 45 seconds. If I make it to the minute mark, I'm in tears. <laughs> on the worst days, I can't get out of the bed. I don't make it to the bathroom. When I can get up, I have to have help. But who was Kine's backup crew? She had a devoted family featuring her husband, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and her husband's nephew and nieces. Her nieces, Alika and Deja, took charge of shower duties while her nephew became the go-to guy for walking support. Talk about a personal cheering squad. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. I'm ready to get washed up. Alicia is 16. If I'm going to take a good shower, Alicia helps. Or if Deja's here, she helps. Deja is 19. And she's in college, so she's in and out of the house here. Kanai's weight issues started early. By 10, she was tipping the scales at over 150 pounds. And by 13, she was between 230 to 240 pounds. Surprisingly, Kanai lived a normal through high school life, complete with dating and prom nights. Her weight? Not a problem in her eyes, so the binge eating continued. Did she adopt healthy eating habits after high school? I don't feel like I missed out on anything during that time because of my size. So I was happy in high school. I dated. I went to prom. So I didn't see a reason to change how I ate. So I kept eating more and gaining weight. And I graduated from high school at 17. I was well over 350 pounds, but I was still able to manage pretty well at that time. Following her high school years, Kanai's independence led to an escalation in fast food runs and binge eating. Hitting 400 pounds didn't slow her down. Movement wasn't an issue, so all was peachy in her world. But Kanai had dreams beyond just getting by, dreams of a bigger family. Yet her weight began causing infertility and other health issues. Now it was getting serious. But there were some struggles. Infertility can put a strain on the relationship. I just always figured that once I found someone that I wanted to settle down with, I'd get pregnant, we'd have kids, we'd go on with life. But I wasn't getting pregnant. I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it did attribute to weight gain, and that devastated me. Then, at 41, Kanai decided enough was enough and reached out to the legendary Dr. Now. With a starting weight of a whopping 614 pounds, Dr. Now's prescription was a strict 1-200 calorie diet and daily exercise, aiming for a bold 75-pound loss in two months. But would she be able to stick to the tough regimen laid out for her? Okay. And, height, yes. and did anybody in the family would tell you you're eating too much, you don't eat that much? Or Will they, they tell me that? Yeah. No. Nobody tell you that? No. Okay. No one's going to step on my toes. Well, the dynamic seems to be that you get everyone to enable you, and you use them as a crutch, and it sounds like that is affecting their health too. So would you agree with that? On her second visit, Kanai was down to 592 pounds, far from the target. 
Confronted by Dr. Now, she got defensive, hitting him with, You're not a magician and you're not a god, you're just a doctor. Yikes, talk about a tension-filled moment. So, if you expect us to be magic to make you lose weight, it's not gonna happen. I never asked you for magic. You're not a magician and you are not God. You are a doctor. You're exactly right. I'm the doctor who's telling you how to get healthy. And so what's the purpose of you coming and seeing us and not following the diet and do what you need to save your life? Because everything is up to you, it's not up to us. Stop it, stop, stop, stop. What is with this I'm attitude you giving me that you're upset because I tell you you're not following the diet? No, I am upset because you were but despite the rocky start, Kanai committed to the 1-200 calorie grind. Dr. Now also recommended therapy with Dr. Paradise, who suggested Kanai write a letter to her late mom to process her grief and everything since her passing. But how does this impact her progress towards her weight loss goals? To her gravesite to read it to her. I was never able to get any closure from losing her because of my size. I couldn't go to her burial and say goodbye. And it's one of my biggest regrets that I let my weight get so out of hand that I couldn't do that. So I want to make that right. And I want to say all the things I never got to say to her. And by her third appointment, Kanai had dropped to 543 pounds and received a new goal. However, dreams of surgery were put on hold due to health concerns signaled by high white blood cell counts. Kanai's journey is a testament to the fact that the path to health is as much about mental and emotional strength as it is about physical change. Some episodes of therapy of um, um, rapid heartbeat and atrial fibrillation, and that is something that we need to be concerned because with that issue, you won't survive surgery. And the reality is, with this issue, your body is getting close to a breaking point. And right now, you're not going to live very long unless you lose a lot more weight before things get worse. It's not possible to talk about the craziest patients to ever appear on the show without including Shenny Murray. Shinny's story is so crazy it might just have you picking your jaw up off the floor. But what led her down this path? And how did her actions shock both viewers and the show's medical team alike? I'm so, I feel like my body's ready to give up. It just makes me feel like I have no hope because I feel trapped in this body. And I can't really believe I got this way. I never thought my life could end up like this. Shinny was so big that even the most basic tasks became monumental challenges for her. Her husband, Freddy, was unwavering pillar of strength, taking on everything from personal care to managing their day-to-day -day life. Despite Freddy's devotion, Shinny couldn't help feeling like she was holding him back, a sentiment that weighed heavily on her. But how did she end up gaining all the weight? I feel like a burden to him. I feel like a burden to my family. I feel like a burden to everyone that's in my life. But what hurts me the most is my lymphedema in my legs. And my legs get very swollen. And it's just painful. I hate my body so much. Reflecting on the previous glimpse into Shaney's life, it's evident that her childhood experiences had a deep impact on her. Growing up as the only child, her childhood took a stark turn at the age of five after she was molested by her cousin. That traumatic moment was a turning point, leading her to find solace and escape in food, transforming it from mere sustenance to her comfort zone. Yet this comfort zone would transform into her cage. I was a normal sized child until the age of five because there was one time where we was at my uncle's house and I was molested by my cousin. I didn't know as a child what was going on. As we've seen, Shaney's background and experiences deeply influenced her behavior and mindset. From her appearance on the show, it was immediately apparent that Shaney's dedication to changing her life was, to put it mildly, less than solid. Despite serious health risks and a clear plan from Dr. Now, her commitment seemed to waver from the start. How did this defiance manifest in her journey? You're not realizing that? I did not realize that. You're still eating whatever you want, whenever you want. Not necessarily all the time. 
All right, I don't think you're grasping how dangerous your situation is, Shanae. And with all the health issues you've got, you may not even make it to 30. You're not even trying. Did you even reduce a single thing in your diet? I cut pork out. The drama escalates further following Shanae's initial lack of commitment. In a twist that had viewers gripping their seats, Shanae and Freddie became the ultimate diet-dodging duo. Their covert OPS to sneak in pizzas and burgers into the hospital didn't go unnoticed, earning them a less-than-pleased reaction from Dr. Now. That's some next-level craziness. The lying need to stop now. Okay, Shanae, here's the situation. Okay. For four months, I have seen you from day one. You haven't lost any weight. Plus, the hospital staff not only seen you eating pizza, but burgers, and then you're smart enough not to throw it your own trash, throw it in somebody else's trash. The emotional roller coaster reaches new heights as we see Shanee's journey unfold. Audiences rode a roller coaster of emotions, from empathy to sheer frustration, as Shanee stubbornly resisted the path laid out for her, displaying a level of defiance that was, frankly, baffling. The real shocker came when she was denied approval for weight loss surgery. She wasn't expecting this. Not true. No, I know what I'm talking about. I'm just using the science. And you don't want to listen, so don't try to teach me medicine. Oh, I'm not trying to teach you medicine, but I'm trying to teach you about my body. Okay, can I ask you a question? Do you believe in God? What does that have to do with this discussion? Well, I'm telling you, it's not a matter of faith is a matter of medicine and science and physiology. After facing numerous obstacles and conflicts, Shaney's journey takes an unexpected turn. Six months later, Shaney was avoiding appointments and giving the cold shoulder to the psychological support team. A particularly crazy moment came when she confronted Dr. Now with questions about his beliefs about God before boldly stating she didn't need his help. And just like that, she was off the line. But where would she go then? But do you believe in God? Well, I believe in God, and I believe that God is going to take me as far as he wants me to. He put me on this earth. If he wants me to have this surgery, he will. And if he doesn't, I won't. It's in his timing. After leaving the show, she turned to YouTube, taking up vlogging to share her journey post-show, asserting she was losing weight on her own. Whether truth or fiction, Sheenie's claims divided viewers and sparked debates across the internet. But one thing is for sure, Sheenie's time on the show cemented her as one of the most unforgettable, and yes, craziest, stars to ever appear on the show. And I'm calling to find out what's going on. Once again, Sheenie has missed her appointment. But this time, she's not even answering her phone or responding to us. She's no longer part of the weight loss program. Diving into Maya Radanovich's journey on the show is like flipping through a storybook of hope, struggle, and a whole lot of crazy moments. At 33, Maya stepped into the spotlight sharing a truth that hit close to home for many. Waking up each morning, she felt a wave of gratitude that her body hadn't given up on her during the night. Her story is filled with ups and downs that promise to keep you on the edge of your seat. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I thank God that my body didn't give out during the night. Because my health is so bad now, I never know when my body's gonna hit its limit. Picking up from the wake-up call that shook her world, Maya, with her boyfriend Christian by her side, moved to Houston, ready to tackle her weight issues head-on. The initial excitement was solid as Maya managed to shed an impressive 50 pounds. But just when you thought the tide was turning, life threw a curveball. This is way outside my comfort zone. Not just to do something active like this, but to be doing it in public. I think it just goes to show how determined I am and how far I've already come. One more, Maya. Let's do it. Ooh. And 10. Yay. Good oh, job. Good. That was great. Following the promising start at her next check-in with Dr. Now, the scales told a different story. Maya had lost only nine pounds. This setback was enough for Dr. Now to put a pause on her weight loss program, citing a lack of progress. And interestingly, Christian, who was supposed to be Maya's rock, turned out to be more of a stumbling block. 
This marks the beginning of Maya's emotional and physical challenges. Treating me like this. <laughs> I'm about to melt down. Doctor now asked you a simple question. I've answered questions in the past. I can take a day off. I hate you. I hate you for doing this to me, Christian. Why can't you just answer the questions? Oh, you're costing me my weight loss surgery and you're ruining everything. Damn it, Christian, stop. Stop. In a painful shift from her struggling progress, heartbroken and overwhelmed, she reached out to her mom pouring out her frustrations and disappointment through tears. Maya's story is a reminder that the journey to weight loss is never just about the physical weight, but also the emotional baggage that comes with it. Mom, I think Christian's everything up at the doctor's office. No, mom, mom. Mom, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. He's with my life. Yes, mom, he's... Yes, here, my mom wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Talk to my mom, Christian, please. No. Please talk to my mom. Look, Christian, mom, put it on, it's on speakerphone. Do not hang up on my mom. 